Hi, and welcome to the very first episode of PwC's Casual Side. My name is Kim, and today we will talk with our CEO John Parkhouse. Traveling from London to New York, Luxembourg is at least for now the final destination of his professional journey. During this episode, you'll find out why he decided to stay in this tiny yet incredibly charming country within the heart of Europe. We will talk about the values of our firm, specifically how we care about our people and our clients. We will also get a first insight into the social life at PwC, our diversity and inclusion projects, as well as some of our future steps into an even more sustainable direction. Without further ado, let's jump right in. Hello, John. Thank you for joining our first episode. Hello, Kim. Many thanks. How are Pleasure you? Pleasure to be here. I'm um, excellent. Great. Nice. Excellent. To, nice to hear that. So, as our CEO, you have made interesting and challenging experiences during your life. Could you maybe let us know about you and your career path? Yeah, I'll I'll I'll, I'll try and be quick because I know this isn't all about me. But um, uh, I uh, studied physics at university in um, in the UK, in England. Uh, and joined the profession uh, back then, uh, got my qualification in the UK, and then came a sort of a pivotal moment in my career, which is when I joined the firm in New York. Um, and I spent two phenomenal years in New York, and I think that is one of the one of the great things about a firm like PwC is the opportunity to 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 travel and experience different cultures. And for me, that was a real formative time. Um, and uh, w once I'd done my two years in New York, I then had to decide where, where else, I, I, what else I wanted to do, what I wanted to do next. Um, and actually, whilst working there, I'd done a little bit of, uh, uh, I've done a couple of jobs here in Luxembourg. Um, and I sort of figured, actually, Luxembourg seems like a, a pretty good place to spend another couple of years before finally getting back to the UK. Um, so I came here for... Uh, two years um, and as with many people that actually come to Luxembourg uh, I've now been here 26 and um, don't see myself moving uh, any further and um, most of my career has been really spent in the the client and the market dimension serving a lot of the big um, US and UK uh, clients that we have as a firm uh, and then you know five years ago I, I took over as the uh, senior partner here at PwC Luxembourg, and um, and it's been a wild ride ever since. So uh, um, yeah, it's been an, it's been a great it's been a great career. I was never planning to be an accountant. It was uh, it was just something I sort of found by accident, as it were. Um, but I think the dynamics of a firm like PwC is 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 uh, is really something that just creates huge opportunity. Um, across so many different spheres, uh, and uh, uh, it's 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 really been great for me. And uh, why Luxembourg? I mean, did you ever think you will come one day to Luxembourg? Once I don't think I don't think anybody grows up thinking one day <laughs> I'm going to go and live and work in Luxembourg. Um, and um, I mean, why Luxembourg for me? As I said, was uh, I'd I'd done a couple of jobs that were based here. I'd I'd had the opportunity to come here for a few weeks. And experience it, um, and uh, you know the, um, the the combination of of a, a relatively small community, but an incredibly dynamic, innovative, and international um, sort of set of clients and 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 way of looking at things um, uh, was was really appealing as a as a young professional, um, and uh, uh, there were very. Uh, very much leading the way in terms of the, the sphere of expertise that I'd, I'd, I'd carved out for myself. Um, and, uh, and back then it was a, a very small firm. Uh, I mean, we were 120 people back then, very different today. Um, but, uh, you know, it was fast paced, it was exciting. And I, I think, as said, it was really a, a stepping stone to go back to the UK. Um, but uh, as a place to come and experience that cultural diversity, um, that uh, sort of uh, smaller community, but still in, a, in, a, in an incredibly sort of fast-paced, fast-moving international environment um, uh, is, is something that, was, that appealed to me then and I think is still very much alive and kicking today. So uh, that's sort of why Luxembourg for me. 
Sounds great. I think uh, plenty of people would love to join them after hearing this. I, well, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so, yeah. So our idea is to talk about our firm and other business matters in an approachable way. When you joined PwC Luxembourg some years ago, things were quite different. Uh, you have implemented some changes in our day-to-day -day corporate life, for instance, is the dress code, so business casual. Um, so how does an appropriate business casual outfit look like? Well, I mean, as you said, I, I mean, a, a raft of changes when I came, came in as senior partner five years ago. Um, and, and really changes uh, focused on making us more relevant and approachable as a firm for our people. Um, I mean, when I, when I came on board, I think we were f um, much more hierarchical, much more formal in, in, in how we approach things. Uh, I mean, you know, everybody wore ties, everybody wore suits. Um, and, uh, and, and when I looked outside, I, I, I saw that that really wasn't the uh, the the way things were going more broadly, um, and and it, and, I, and it really wasn't what our people sort of really wanted to see. And so, um, uh, you know, business casual was something that 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 I introduced to, to some resistance at the time. And I think now it's um, uh, it's uh, it's it's just normal. I mean, I'm sitting here in jeans and a shirt, so um, uh, not that you can see it on the podcast. Um, and um, and I think really the the, uh, the 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 test that we we lay out is, you know, you, you need to be, um, you know, presentable in terms of how you, how you come to work. Um, so my 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 rule is, you know, if my mother were in law were coming to visit, then you know, would I feel comfortable <laughs> wearing what I'm wearing? Um, and um, and then obviously you also need to be making sure that you are. Um, uh, adapting to client needs. So, you know, you need to be ready and able to go to clients who, who, who do have a more formal dress code um, and uh, make sure that you're, uh, you're um, uh, uh, yeah, responding to how clients uh, would like to, to, to treat with us. And I think, you know, uh, you know various other things that, that, that we've introduced. Um, I mean, we have... Um, uh, you know, lots of things around, uh, um, you know, sort of making sure that we create a, a strong social community. Because I think one of the realities that we have here in Luxembourg in, in, and, and, and certainly at PwC, and it's one of the things that we really pride ourselves on, to be honest, I, I think it's phenomenal, is that, you know, we attract people from all over the world. So uh, here in Luxembourg, we've got uh, 77 different nationalities. And when we're talking about 77 different nationalities, we're not talking one or two people from one country. This is whole sort of uh, cohorts of people from, from, from different nationalities. Um, and, and so it's a fantastic cultural melting pot. I mean, I love getting into the lift and, uh, and, and you know, seeing someone new and asking, so, so where are you from? type thing and you know that can range from France or Belgium to the Philippines or Mexico or Australia or 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 or, or uh, uh, and any place in between so you know uh, um, and I and I think the, um, the the sort of things that we try to introduce here at, at PwC is to is to really make sure that that we we come together more, more like a sort of a family uh, more a sort of a um, uh, uh, a community of, of professionals um, and that we can actually do lots of things together. So one of the things that, that, that we, we've had for a number of years now is, is what we call the POP, the people, at, um, uh, people of PwC, where you've just got a, a series of you know, social clubs that exist uh, where people can coalesce around common interest and, and we fund that as a firm. So we support that as a firm. Um, and, you know, that can range from uh, the pop bikers, you know, they go on bike trips uh, weekends and they, they have a nice tours each year to, to sports clubs, to other types of social gatherings. Um, and then there's other communities. I mean, uh, you know, three years ago, we launched what we call our shine community, uh, which is which is really about the, uh, the, the sort of the sexual diversity, the LGBT agenda and making sure that that, that people that either uh, fall within that community or, um, you know, are advocates of that community can really come together um, and, and sort of share, you know, share experiences and make sure that we as a firm 
uh, sort of empowering them to succeed within our firm. Um, so I think there's a there's a big piece around the the, the cultural diversity and how we um, support that from a, from a sort of a social community type perspective. Um, linked to that, I think there is also a, a big focus on uh, obviously our gender diversity. Um, you know, so so um, making sure that we are trying to as much as possible have a sort of a recruitment approach mentality to to, to drive gender diversity. We recognize how important it is uh, for for our people, the health of our firm, but also for our clients. Um, and um, uh, you know, and 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 trying to make sure that those, those opportunities uh, are sort of. Um, uh, are, are you know equally there as as people progress through and 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 trying to support you know women that choose to stay at home for a bit to look after their families to get back to the office um, and trying to make sure that we have a, a, a that sort of a dynamic. I mean, it 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 uh, at PwC within the gender space we're we're at about fifty fifty uh, between uh, women and men. That gets more challenging as you get more senior, but still at partner level, um, we're at about 30% of our, of our partner group um, is uh, our, our female. Uh, and that's something we continue to drive. I remember two years ago having a partner intake uh, where the, uh, I think there were 10 partners admitted. Um, at that time, we had one man. Uh, and so you know, it was a great it was a great partner admission. Yeah, it's a fantastic sort of uh, group of of professionals. Um, but I think that speaks to the opportunity that we try and make sure we 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 have. And, and no firm is perfect in this. But with regard to both gender, but also in terms of cultural background and race, um, uh, in terms of driving that that sort of uh, opportunity for all, as it were. Um, yeah, so I think I sort of went off off a little bit the beaten track, but uh, um, uh, so um, yeah, there no, we go. Yeah, I I can totally confirm. I mean, I have two nationalities. I feel very comfortable here in Luxembourg and in PwC, as you mentioned. We have seventy seven different nationalities, mm. um, so it feels amazing to be honest that's with. great and obviously i'm not a luxembourger yeah so uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, uh, and next to this social community we try to have here at pwc luxembourg so all the initiative you've mentioned the pop clubs um diversity and inclusion shine initiative um there are also our values we have five big values one of them is care mm. and these values define who we are and how we work at pwc so how did we care during COVID um for our clients and for our people within the firm yeah, I think, I mean, may, maybe to to take a, a little bit of a, a step back, um, you know, uh, as, as you say, we, we've we've laid out our values at PwC. Uh, as you say, there's there's five values. Um, and, and I think what's really important to understand when we look at the values is that these aren't things that basically we brainstormed in some room in New York to, to come up with what we want to express to the world as our values. These values were built based upon a reflection that was made across our entire network. So 275,000 people contributing to their thoughts on what PwC is today and what PwC should be, right? And, and as a result of that, we crystallized this into, into these five values. Um, uh, which I'll, I'll just touch on in a second. But, um, uh, you know, and, and, and I remember when I saw these values first presented, okay? I was, I was at a senior partner meeting. Um, and uh, I, I must admit, I'm, a, I'm quite a cynic in, in, in many ways in terms of the corporate speak. But I saw these values presented and I actually thought, they've nailed it, right? They've described who we are actually how I've experienced the firm through my years here and why I've chosen to stay at PwC. Um, and those five values are um, around integrity, acting with integrity. Um, they're around working together. They're around really making a difference with our clients. Um, they're, uh, they're around care, caring for our people, caring for our clients, caring for our communities. Um, and they're about reimagining the possible really thinking outside the box and thinking about where we should be 
taking the firm and where we should be uh, uh, taking our clients. As you said, um, you know, when we when we shifted into COVID, um, which was obviously nothing with, with anybody had planned for, etc. You know, one of the first things that um, that 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 we really took away was, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty out there, a lot of nervousness. You know, nobody knows what this is going to going to mean in terms of, uh, you know, where the business is going, job security, uh, you know, wh- where am I going to be tomorrow type thing. So, so uh, and, and, you know, I think one of the first things that we did was, was really reflect on that as a leadership team here in Luxembourg. Um, and, um, uh, and, and, and basically to come out with a very clear message very early on in, in the crisis, shortly after shutdown, to say, you know, we have a people first agenda. We are not going to be laying people off as a result of COVID. OK, um, you know, that that will be an absolute last resort. So let's not even talk about that. You can you can, you know, continue to operate and function in the security that the firm is with you with and 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 we're ready to carry that through the uh, through the bad times as well as the good um and i think at that moment uh the the feedback that i got was um was 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 uh you know that that's it was exactly what people needed to hear yeah because i i mean at at that time there were uh you know lots of noise around other players in the market let's say around oh well we need to issue sort of what we call here uh social plans and uh, start laying people off or furloughing people etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, and we basically said no you know that's not the way we want to go we want to keep our people engaged with the firm uh, there are plenty of things that we can be doing even if business turns down and we will carry that as a firm and i think then more broadly the um the 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 mindset that we've really had around covid um uh, is is again back to that people first and then link to that client first okay um and uh, and and basically trying to sort of make sure that through all layers of management we're understanding that this is incredibly hard for people to go through and if you think of the luxembourg environment you're in an environment where people as i said before have come from you know many different countries and 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 these are these are young people that have come into an environment they're away from family they're away from friends they're probably stuck in some small apartment somewhere here in luxembourg they can't get out they can't go to the office it's hard right so trying to make sure that we we instigated very quickly you know uh really focused engagement and reach out to our people that we were monitoring you know how people were doing um, making sure through the use of technology, and that was actually one of the real pluses that we had, is you know we, we use Google as our as our um, uh, sort of collaboration uh, platform, and you know that proved to be phenomenally good uh, throughout the the COVID crisis, en- enabling lots of different ways of of exchanging and sharing with our people, but really trying to make sure that we were as systematic as we could to you know really be there for our people, understand their needs, and as a result, you know, be able to empathize and be there for our clients. Um, and the feedback we've got from our clients and from our people in, 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 in those times has, has really been positive. And we've really had some, some, some lessons coming out of that. I mean, one of the, one of the clear um, uh, points that we took away was, you know, the communication that we had to instigate at that point in time. It was very much unplanned unscripted but you know um uh um at um at the time at the at the point in time so you know we instigated very quickly a weekly um uh, uh webcast to all of the all of the all of the firm to update them on what was going on how many cases were we seeing in the firm what were the measures we were taking how was business going you know to really sort of bring them along and what are the things that we need them to be doing um uh to 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 support the firm through these through these times and um uh and and you know we've kept that so we've shifted now to a monthly cadence but but you know that that sort of um 
more unscripted, more sort of, uh, um, you know, trying to answer the concerns and the questions of our people rather than just trying to push a, a corporate message has been a, a really valuable learning that'll, that'll take us through. Um, so I, I really think, and, and, and just to close, I, I start going on and on. You need to cut me short if I'm, if I'm getting boring. Um, but, but just to close, I, I think, you know, when you look at any corporate, um, uh, you, uh, or, or any body, actually, any individual, you know, the, 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 the true test of, of the values that they hold out as being their values is when times get really, really tough. Um, and uh, I, I, I would say we certainly didn't get everything right. But what I would say is through these times um, and, co and continuing through today, you know, our values have been our guide in terms of how we operate with all our people, making sure that we are honest we're acting with integrity to our, with our people. That we're in this together. We're working together to really, to really, uh, to really get there. We're reimagining how we work, um, and and how we work with our clients. How we work together. How we coach people. How we how we bring them through the firm. How we onboard people. I mean, we've just onboarded two hundred uh, um, new joiners uh, 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 last week. Uh, a, a massive exercise by our, from our HR and, and, and business people uh, has been a great, uh, great, great success. The feedback from the people we've onboarded has been has been phenomenal. So, you know, lots of different things that go into that mix, and uh, um, so I, I think, you know, it's it's been a, a real learning experience, but a, but in many ways a good one. That's true. I mean, there's no question. 2020 was quite a difficult time, challenging time for all of us. But personally, for you, um, what has been the biggest challenge, would you say? I think the biggest challenge probably is, has been, um, you know, uh, the, the need to make big decisions very quickly has been, has been one. Um, and so, you know, the, the people first decision, for instance, you know, that that was one that that brings with it for my partners a lot of risk, a lot of risk. Yeah, um, um, but you know it, we we were able to very quickly coalesce together, look at look at where things stood, and and and, and make that decision. So I think I think you know that that was a challenge, but it's something that that again spoke to how we operate together as as a firm. Um, then I think. Um, uh, probably uh, being, yeah, being less politically correct, if you like, in terms of um, how we communicate and 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 how we 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 reach out to our people. I mean, that you know, within any organisation of any size, I mean, we're we're nearly three thousand people here in Luxembourg, um, and and given the cultural diversity that I've spoken to, messages can be very quickly misunderstood mistaken and and uh, you know you start running off in different directions but i think that you know one of the challenges has been not to over engineer the messages to try and keep it simple uh and to try and keep it very straightforward and be open to challenge be open to question and be open to pivot adjust as as needed um uh, as as either thing circumstances change obviously but also as we see things don't work yeah. So, um, uh, and then you know, maintaining the momentum on the on the business side in in a in a in what is uh, a pretty pretty tough environment. So maintaining those client connections and 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 really reimagining how we operate with our clients. And what are the biggest adjustments we need to make in order to adapt to the new normal and be more resilient to new challenges? Are there global sustainability agendas that can help us to prepare for this? And if so, how? Yeah, so I think um, uh, you know, as, as as part of the this, uh, and 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 actually, that's that's how we and many have phrased it. We've we've phrased the sort of the way we operate today as as sort of this the new normal, as it were. Um, and um, you know, the new normal is really an extension, if if you like, of 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 where we were already at uh, as a firm. So you know, we already had home based working. 
as a as a policy. Um, obviously, that shifted because I think home based working was was something that you could do if you wanted to, but it wasn't something that was really actively encouraged. And and I think many many layers of management would have been, or many people in management would have been quite suspicious as to you know how effective that is we've seen that works yeah things we need to we need to um you know uh, tweak etc but we've seen that works we've seen the technology that can support that um working as well uh, uh, and so that i think is already a big shift where where you know we're now in a more a new normal which is on the one hand recognizing the need for for to have people come into the office to, to be together physically, to share, to collaborate, to coach. Um, uh, but on the other hand, giving them much more flexibility, you know, really full flexibility um, around where they want to work from. So in, in, uh, apart from when their team leaders are sort of saying, okay, I want to get the team in, you know, other than that, it's really up to you or the, or the, or the client, client specificity. And that's something that we now have, and that's something that will, will continue. Um, and I think um, you know that what we've got at the moment is we we had a uh, we've got a working group that was looking at, at, at the new normal, you know how we operate during COVID, um, and that's something that iterates uh, as 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 things develop. But we've also got a task force that is looking at the next normal. How do we take the learnings coming out of of COVID and make sure that we embed them into how we operate going forward? how we operate with our clients, how we work with our people, um, how we impact society, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I think that there's, uh, there's, there's uh, uh, various, various different things that we can talk to there. But I think one of the other things that's really important, and you touch on it with the, with the sustainability agenda, you know, COVID has hit at a time when obviously the sustainability agenda has been um, gaining momentum. Um, and um, uh, and I think COVID has sort of accelerated that momentum, which has got to be positive. I mean, we've got to accelerate, or we um, we uh, uh, well, some would argue we're, we're already out of time. But but um, uh, you know, if we want to stand any chance of of of, of stopping the uh, the climate trend that we have, um, then uh, then action needs to be taken now. Um, and and you know what I what I what 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 has been really front of mind of, of us at PwC, certainly since I've come in a, a, as a senior partner and, and even before that, is, is our contribution to that sustainable agenda. So, so we're, we're, we've, we've, uh, we actually, the office we're in today was the first top rated green building in Luxembourg. Yeah. Um, and, um, and that was uh, 10 years ago. When we actually came into this this building nine or ten years ago, um, and um, uh, and and uh, linked to that, and I would encourage people listening to take a look at our annual report. You know, we were the first entity in Luxembourg to really have a fully sustainable lens through our annual reporting through the GRI standards, um, and um, uh, that this year there will be an evolution of that taking into account the latest uh, World Economic Forum guidance that has come out. So we've really tried to lead the way uh, on the sustainability front. Um, we have a global commitment towards uh, achieving net zero as a, as a network uh, by 2030. Um, our aim in Luxembourg will be to do that well in advance of that. So we're looking at the next one or two years to be, become net zero. And then our focus is how close can we get to absolute zero, um, given the constraints we operate in. So I think, I think sustainability will, will accelerate. And it's something that, that companies need to be serious about. You know, it really needs to be a core part of their strategy. Um, it's certainly a core part of our strategy, um, and we continue to make investments in that, both in terms of what we do as a firm, but also how we can help our clients in terms of uh, navigating their journey and therefore increasing the impact that we can have on, on making that change. Um, and I think it's something that, that, you know, all our people are, are, are very, um, you know, engaged in and, and, and looking to, to, to make that difference. Um, so... You know, our, our, our purpose as a firm 
so the stated global purpose is is to build trust in society and to solve important problems and anything we can do to try and help i'm not not making out that we are the solution to 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 climate change and the broader societal change that comes with that um uh but but uh you know certainly you know one of the things i'm proud of is that pwc can be one of those catalysts for good catalysts for positive change um and, and that's really what we strive to do great so we're looking very much forward into the green future of pwc so to say yes yes green <laughs> present and even greener future yeah great and last but not least john uh what can you join us expect from pwc luxembourg any advice for them to make their professional lives here so what can you expect i think you can expect a a young dynamic uh environment um our average age is about 28 29 um uh so i i feel quite old sometimes <laughs> when i come in but i i try i try not to to show that um so it, it is really a, a a young environment as said before really a melting pot of 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 different cultures different backgrounds of people um uh you'll you'll find a big focus in the firm on innovation um and uh one of the one of the core projects that 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 we have ongoing at the moment is the recognition um that we took uh, a number of years ago now in terms of our need to really be a, a tech enabled firm um and with that the the real push to make sure that as we bring on people bring our people into the firm that they are not only coming with the the skills and the ex the uh, technical capabilities that they bring from their their studies but we are giving them the opportunity to um quote unquote upskill in the digital world our aim is that we have all of our people really uh, able to succeed in the world of tomorrow uh with the right digital skills as well as the right business skills so that'll be something that you will see coming into into PwC you know uh a, a big focus on your training and and providing you with the tools to develop and be ready to succeed whether that's within the firm or outside the firm in the in the digital world of tomorrow i think you you know you will certainly come into an environment where you know you'll need to be working hard um uh and investing your time um and and i think on, on in that regard i i would i would sort of basically say you know the more that you invest your time in in terms of obviously doing the best you can on the on the on the on the jobs that uh, that that you're working on but in terms of embracing the broader pwc and understanding what opportunities exist for you in this phenomenal firm um uh then then the more you will get out of it you know i i as said before i never had any dream of being an accountant i even today i wouldn't qualify myself as an accountant you know because there is so much more that you can actually bring to the table at, at, at pwc and that's about you know your readiness to be curious your readiness to really explore the different things that you can be doing but also a recognition that 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 you need to um to to work hard i have a i have um a phrase that i that i sort of uh, um uh became attached to when i uh, when i took over as senior partner but it's a phrase that really speaks to me and it's very simple so you know if you want to get the most out of a pwc experience what you need to do is you need to dream big you need to work hard and you need to have fun right dream big because there is so much actually that you can be doing within this firm both within your core expertise but also more broadly in terms of you know building the firm working with your clients working with the communities etc etc um and and looking at ways to reimagine the possible as we put in our values work hard there's no question that you know if you want to succeed in PwC you know we 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 really you you're going to need to invest the time you're going to need to be ready to 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 put the effort in um and have fun you know there there is as we've talked about before there is the social element of pwc in the community uh the young the young dynamic sort of uh, nature of the workforce but also what i would say about having fun is enjoying coming into work in the morning what i love about this firm is that after 28 years with pwc i still wake up in the morning 
and I'm really happy to come to work. And 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 if you can find a career, and I'm not saying that every day is brilliant, every day is great, but if you can find a career um, whereby you can be waking up in the morning, you feel purpose, you feel like actually you're going to go in, you're going to make a difference, and you're going to enjoy it, that's when you're going to have fun, and that's when you're going to succeed. Great. Thank you very much for this inspirational last quote. And uh, thank you for your time. It was a pleasure to talk to you. And you, Kim. Many thanks. And uh, hopefully I didn't go on too long. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's it for today's episode. If you don't want to miss out on our upcoming stories, hit subscribe, feel free to share, and let us know what you think. Thank you for listening and see you for the next episode of PwC's Casual Side. <laughs>